Uh, welcome to the 2016 Hampton Deliberative Session. Thank you for attending. If you would at this time uh, uh, rise, uh, Nathan Page will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Nathan. Please, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, Thank you, Nathan. I, I did this once before uh, when I was 11 years old, so it's been a couple of days. So okay, all right. right. Just a few. The, uh, I want to acknowledge that the warrant has been posted in accordance with statute. I'd like to introduce the uh, officials on the stage this morning. To my right, uh, Rick Griffin, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Rusty Bridal, the Vice Chair, uh, Mary Louise Woolsey, uh, Phil Bean, James Woodell. Uh, right behind me is Jane Cipher, the town clerk. The town attorney is adjacent to her, Mark Gerald. And next to Mark is our town manager, Fred Welch. In the audience, I've seen the um, budget committee chair, Eileen Latimer. And our finance director is Christy Pulliam, who is over in the corner. She is. Um, our administrative assistant, Christine Osman, is to the rear uh, of the stage. Our deputy town clerk, Shirley Doheny, is uh, behind me next to our town clerk. Our town planner is um, in the audience as well. We'll be hearing from him shortly, Jason Bashan. Uh, the supervisors of the checklist are out in the hall, so if you want to participate in any of our votes this morning, you need to check in with them. Uh, Arlene Andriozzi, Janine St. Germain, and Barbara Renault, and they are being assisted this morning by Teresa Ryan and Martha Williams. Assisting the moderator this morning, to my uh, left, Dennis Kilroy, Nathan Page, who you just saw, Daryl Mosher, who's uh, down on the uh, runway, along with Bob Ross. Uh, there's coffee and food um, and lunch um, as the day wears on uh, in, the, um, in the hall. Uh, once again, supported by the eighth grade class at Hampton Academy. Um, your purchases will support their trip to New York City, which the eighth grade takes in the spring. And they're also running a raffle. They have a calendar raffle. And if you choose to participate in that, uh, I've been told it has uh, something like $3,000 worth of prizes. Um, you, can, you can get a raffle ticket from them this morning. Today's uh, proceedings are our deliberative session. Uh, the, the mantra, our, our purpose is to discuss, debate, and possibly amend uh, all of the articles that have been set forth in the 2016 warrant, with the exception of those warrant articles whose wo wording is prescribed by law. So there are zoning articles, two through nine, that fall into that category. Our collective bargaining agreements fall into that category. Uh, but they certainly can be discussed and debated. Uh, it's not necessary to vote these articles onto the ballot. All of them will appear on the March 8th ballot. Our work today is to determine what those ballots will, will say, what they will look like, with the exception of those uh, zoning and planning and, and CB, CBA articles, uh, which we can't touch. But the other ones, it's up to us um, to determine how they will appear on the March 8th ballot. And the voting uh, will take place here at Winnicunit in the dining hall from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And relative to the form of the, the questions that will appear on March 8, we can't eliminate any warrant articles, so all 47 will appear. No new purposes can be introduced that weren't warned to the voters via the posted warrant. Uh, the purpose of the appropriations can't be changed, and no warrant article can be eliminated, can be amended to eliminate the subject matter. Today's um, rules, I, I, I see many, many familiar faces, but um, even for those who, who've been here um, since they were 11 years old, um, the, uh, the, we need to go over the meetings. We're going to proceed one article at a time. I'll read the article. After the article has been moved and seconded for discussion, I'll recognize the proponent of the article first and then open the article for discussion by the assembly. I'll recognize a new speaker on an article before returning to somebody who's already spoken with the exception that the proponent of the article will be permitted to answer questions or offer further details regarding the purpose of the article in response to a question or opinion as appropriate. All, quest all questions should be directed to me. If you wish to speak, wait to be recognized, 
and then speak into the microphone so that we can ensure that your remarks are carried by channel 22. Please begin your remarks by stating your name and address. We will deal with only one amendment at a time. The amendments must be in writing. After the amendment has been moved and seconded, please give the written amendment to me or to Mr. Kilroy or Mr. Ross or Mr. Mosher so that we can have it correctly and then we'll give it to the town clerk and there's paper here um, available to write out amendments. Please focus in your remarks on the content of the amendment or the article and refrain from any personal comments. I will revoke recognition of any speaker who speaks or acts in an abusive or disruptive manner. I'll also revoke recognition of any speaker who refuses to keep his or her comments relevant to the article under consideration or is needlessly repetitive. Non-residents will be allowed to speak on the affirmative vote of the meeting. If an issue arises during the meeting that's not covered by any of these rules, I intend to use fairness and majority rule as guiding principles with due consideration for the minority's right to be heard. This is your meeting and as a result, my determinations may be overruled. Voting will be conducted by hand or standing vote and you should have gotten on check-in. If you haven't, please do a card and a wristband so that we know you are a Hampton, a registered Hampton voter. Five voters may make a request in writing prior to a vote that the vote be taken by secret written ballot. After the vote has been declared and before we've considered any other business, any non-ballot vote, so that to be a hand vote, may be questioned by seven vote by seven voters and the vote shall be retaken by secret yes no ballot. Reconsideration of votes previously taken may be restricted at any time during the meeting by an affirmative vote of the meeting. I'd ask you uh, for the courtesy of all here today to turn off your cell phones while we're in session and per the state fire code please note the location of the exits and if a fire alarm activates please leave the building by the nearest exit, uh, help anyone that needs it and assemble in front of the SAU 21 building. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to allow non-resident staff of the town of Hampton to speak during the meeting to answer any questions and provide information regarding any Warren article, specifically the following individuals. Our town manager, Fred Welch, our town attorney, Mark Gerald, our building inspector, Kevin Schultz, our finance director, Christy Pulliam, uh, the recreation and parks director, Diana Martin, the assessor, Ed Tinker, our fire chief, Jamie Ayotte, our administrative assistant, Christina Osman, our public works director, Chris Jacobs, and our Lane Library Director, Amanda Cooper. Do I have a motion to that regard? So moved by Mr. So Diener, seconded by so Mr. Bridal. All in favor of allowing our non-resident staff to assist us? Thank you, down hands. Any opposed? Those folks will be able to assist us uh, during the meeting.